buy to let landlords could have and probably should have built 3 million council homes. What am I talking about? Well, that is a report in The Guardian recently that's been written by the Renters Reform Coalition Campaign Group. The Renters Reform Coalition Campaign Group would probably be a little bit biased around how they've written their report. It would be a bit of fun and also a serious note to read through this with you. So if you want to see the whole article, it was in The Guardian and it actually says vast growth in value of England rentals since 1990 would have built 3 million council homes. Well, why did the government not build 3 million council homes since the 1990s? This is an exclusive, by the way. Private rentals have grown 400 billion in value, making a mockery of landlords' demands for tax cuts, say campaigners. Well, first of all, it is 2023. Most buy-to-let landlords that I know were not investing in the 1990s. They weren't even investing in the year 2000. Many of them only started investing in the last three, four, five, six, ten, ten years. Half of English private residential landlords have owned a home since at least 2010. That means if only half have owned them since 2010, you need to immediately slash your uplift in value because two-thirds of the time, half the landlords didn't own their homes. Homes might have grown in value by 400 billion since the 90s, but many of the homes bought by buy to investors is stuff that was bought from somebody who else who sold it. Families selling inherited properties, a home that they no longer wanted, or they moved home to another area, whatever it may be. So actually, that 400 billion of growth, number one, did not go to investors. A lot of that money could have gone to normal family homeowners. So straight away, the exclusive headline is inaccurate and incorrect. Why have they not written a report saying the value of UK housing in total today versus the price of value of houses in the 1990s? Not only buy to that investors, but all homeowners have had their values go up too. Growth in capital values means landlords in London with five properties owned since 2013 have met 655,000 without even accounting for profits from rent. Possibly that is true if they owned five properties, but I don't know that many landlords in London who own five properties. In fact, there's 2.2 million landlords in the UK and over 2 million of them own one house. They are people that bought a property as a secondary income. They bought it instead of a pension plan. Why? Because the government's pension plan ain't worth its salt. Five houses have gone up 655 grand in total. What that actually means is one house has gone up just over 100 grand. Well, 100 grand since 2013 is not a big increase towards your pension. Why don't we focus on solving the housing crisis instead of beating up the poor person who's got one house and trying to survive where their tenant is paying less than the mortgage. And by the way, if a tenant is paying less than the mortgage, that landlord has got no choice but to sell up. If they sell up, that tenant loses their home. That's not solving the problem, by the way. Last week, the Office of National Statistics revealed that 43% of renters in Great Britain were finding it difficult to afford their rental payments. Yes, because of supply and demand. How do you reduce rents? What you do is you increase the amount of stock. The government need to provide incentives to landlords to invest in more properties, to build more properties, to convert empty, run-down properties into use. Right across this country, there is hundreds of thousands of empty properties belonging to the council, and these properties are left there to sit, to rot, and decay away. Why are they not doing what Italy does, which is give them to people for a pound, to get them to spend money on them, to bring them back into use, and solve the housing crisis? No, they would prefer to get developers to build the properties. Why? Because maybe the developer is putting money in the coffers of the government. Maybe the developer is sponsoring and funding the government's election campaigns. And I'm not just talking the government, I'm talking the parties trying to get into government as well. Fewer than 54,000 council homes have been built in England since 1990, official figures show. That is not a landlord's fault. That is a government fault. Official data is the government have spent way more than 400 million in the last few months alone on stuff that doesn't work when they could have invested in council homes. All of the money you are wasting in the government could have incentivized and built way more homes than that. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of homes are sitting 
empty right now because they need refurbishment. The government ain't refurbishing them. I just bought a cinema, an old, empty, run-down, dilapidated cinema from the council. The council owned it for over 15 years. I've applied for planning. We're going to convert it into 21 apartments, seven offices, and a gym. Adding 21 properties into the rental market is not going to increase local rents. It's going to reduce local rents. It's supply and demand. All the time, there's empty property sitting there that could be brought back into use. And by the way, it would also provide jobs for people. If all landlords sell, there will be less rental stock available. If there is less rental stock available, there will be more people looking for less stock, which will push rents up. If you get rid of the landlords without the government having a plan, you have got a major, major, major housing crisis. And this is part of the reason we have the housing crisis. Because, by the way, we've been beating landlords up now as a country, as a government, for over 10 years. Because nobody He's looking at the root cause, which is government incentives to reduce the number of houses. Why would the government want increased house prices? Very simple. Because if there is capital growth, every sale they get stamp duty. Every sale they get capital gains tax payments. And when you die, they hit you going out the door with your inheritance tax as well the death tax. You see, the government actually require higher house prices to get tax, tax, and tax off you. The investor does not make the money that this renters reform coalition group say they get because most of this money comes back to one simple fact. The government have a requirement and a policy to push prices up because that brings in more money to their coffers. You need to wake up if you are watching this to the reality. Stop beating on the landlord and maybe it's time we started to make the government change their policies and incentivize growth, incentivize the building of more properties, incentivize more rental stock available and that will bring rents down. That's my comments. This is absolute bull rubbish, whatever you want to call it. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. If you want to know how to help solve the housing crisis, if you want to learn how you could take empty rundown properties back into use and start to provide more accommodation to solve the local problem in rental in your area, there's a completely free report. It's in the pinned comments. It's in the description. Go download it right now and you could be the solution to the local housing crisis because I'll tell you what, the government ain't solving it for are you? I've been Kevin McDonald. You've been amazing. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. If you like this content, check out some more here, and I'll see you soon.